Time for sports. Myra's here to start us off on two wheels. Speaking of looking good, Andrew, that's you. All right. <laughs> Ryder Hedgedahl is enjoying a much-needed uh, rest day on this holiday Monday. The Giro d'Italia gets rolling again tomorrow. Five stages remain, and Ryder has 925 kilometers to gain some ground on the overall leader, Joaquin Rodriguez of Spain. Well, Ryder started yesterday's mountain stage in the pink jersey. He reclaimed it Saturday when he launched an attack on the 27-kilometer summit. However, Rodriguez returned the favor when he attacked in the final kilometer yesterday. He almost caught the stage winner, Matteo Rabatini, arriving across the finish line. 12th, he's 30 seconds back of Joaquin Rodriguez. Tomorrow, stage 16 is mainly uphill once again, 173 kilometers long. Here's Ryder from Italy. Uh, it was... Uh... Hard day. I didn't really feel that great yesterday. Um, conditions and everything, just more of a defensive type day. Um, he's, he's the best at those uh, kind of shorter explosive efforts. So once I was in about 2K with, with most of the big favorites, <clears throat> uh, I didn't want to take the risk of a fall in the acceleration and possibly blowing up and losing more time than I did. So I just had to make a decision to ride my own rhythm and, um, you know, it wasn't so bad to lose the jersey yesterday based on the conditions and stays ahead. So. Five stages remaining, 30 seconds back. What's the game plan from here on out? You know, we still have some, some big climbs and big mountains to go and, yeah, we've had a a taste of it already, but uh, still some very, very decisive days, and we'll see how the body responds. But uh, if I can stay there and, and continue the way I have, um, definitely looking forward to the final time trial in Milan and see how I can finish this thing. Hopefully he finishes in the pink jersey. Well, the Victoria Highlanders have just taken the field in Redmond, Washington for their second game in three nights. Saturday was a setback for Ian Bridge and the boys, dropping a 4-1 decision in Portland for their first defeat of the season. Highlanders now sport a loss and two ties. We'll have results of tonight's game at 11. Behind every great team is a great mascot. Stryker leading the charge yesterday as the Peninsula Co-op looked to string together back-to-back -to -back wins to start their season. The former Highlanders trailed 1-0 in the second half but had plenty of chances on the Colorado Rush keeper. Peninsula Co-op boasts a top flight keeper of their own, Steph Parker. With a superb, again, making a great dive before getting back up and tipping the ball over the bar. Now, Co-op was doing everything to keep the ball out of their net even taking bicycle kicks to the face. Ouch. But they couldn't put anything in the Colorado net either. This one ends in a 1-0 final. No points to show for it, but plenty of good strides going forward. Just because we lost today doesn't mean we're uh, to be counted out for anything. So just unlucky on the day to win, lose on nothing. That team last year territorially absolutely handed us our heads, and uh, today didn't do that. So they're measuring ourselves against them in Vancouver. I'm pretty content with where we are right now. One of the best young baseball talents our province has ever produced is on the field tonight for the Toronto Blue Jays. Brett Laurie is back after sitting out the last four games, serving a suspension for throwing his helmet in the dirt and accidentally hitting the umpire. The Jays went 3-1 and one without their regular third baseman. They now lead Tampa 3-2 in the eighth inning. Well, when Laurie played in the BC Premier Baseball League with the Langley Blaze, he played in the Parksville Royals, BC's best baseball tournament. Victoria Mariners almost made it to the finals this afternoon, but lost in the semis and extra innings, setting up the championship game between Okotoks and Abbotsford. The sun came out, so despite the lack of island flavor on the field, a good crowd was on hand for the final. Put another successful tournament in the books. It's been 18 years and counting. Some very good baseball. Um, it was typical uh, of the PBL. It's competitive games. Uh, there's some well-played games. There's uh, some inconsistent and a couple of games that uh, uh, were not so well-played. But that happens with 16- uh, to 18-year-old uh, in any sport. But uh, there was some very exciting baseball and, and uh, entertaining. People, I think, were very pleased with, uh, with the entertainment value. The Nanaimo Timberman said they wanted to start the WLA season off on the right foot, and they have done just that. The team had hammered the Langley Thunder in their home opener last night. 17-7, Scott Ranger led the way for Nanaimo with four goals and five assists. Joel Henry had a seven-point night. Next action for the team is Thursday when they visit the new Westminster Salmon Bellies.